Hey there, Aloha High School Horn Section. My name is Lauren Griffith. I'm a sophomore horn performance major at the University of Oregon. And in this video, I'm gonna be walking you through and giving you some tips for the piece you're playing called Ancient Flower. So the first excerpt that we're gonna take a look at is from measure nine until measure 18. And I'm just gonna jump right in, play it for you guys, and then I'll give you some tips. So the first thing I want to mention about this is tempo. So in these slower lyrical pieces, it is really challenging to resist the urge to rush. So whenever you're practicing this on your own, make sure you are putting the metronome on what it's marked at and playing it and staying really solid to that. Once you get really comfortable with that, you can take the metronome away, just check it before you play and then focus more on dynamics. Um, and then especially when you're playing it in the ensemble, make sure you're keeping your eyes on your director and not pushing forward. The second thing that's really important about this excerpt is dynamics and phrasing. So basically at the beginning of this, it gives you one stock dynamic marking, which is mezzo forte, which basically tells you nothing. <laughs> because if you were to play this whole lyrical passage at just a flat mezzo forte, it would be so boring. So there's basically two phrases in this little excerpt. And, you know, there's a most important part in like an emphasis of each phrase. So I'm going to put it up on the screen. What you basically want to look for is look for where you think that the most important part of the phrase is and lead to that place with your dynamics getting louder and then back away from that. So I'm going to put some like dynamic markings that I put into my performance of it just now. And then I'm going to play the first four measures-ish again, just like the first three and a half, which is the bit first... Um, phrase and you guys can play along with me and really focus on making this melody into like a, a melody that you would sing, not just a flat row of notes. One, two, three. subject of dynamics, the dynamics should fit into the form of the piece. So this piece is kind of in an ABA format where you'll see the melody that we play in the beginning comes back in the exact same form that we played it the first time at measure 45. At measure 9 it's marked mezzo forte but at measure 45 it's marked forte. So the composer is basically trying to tell us that they want the beginning to be quieter, more peaceful than the end and the end to be a little more like dramatic. So all of these dynamics that I'm talking about, we want those to fit into that larger framework and that bigger idea. The second excerpt that we're gonna take a look at starts at measure 26 and goes until measure 31. And I'm gonna play it for you guys and then I'll give you a little exercise that can help you. So in the last three measures of this excerpt, or four, there's these ascending leaps, and these can be really challenging to get your air through and to hear them in your head. So I have an exercise called the spider, and I'll put it up on the screen, um, and it's gonna help you with these types of intervals. I'll play it for you, and then I'll kind of explain how it works.
So this is a super helpful, helpful, helpful. This is a super help. Why am I struggling so bad? This is a super helpful exercise. I play this, do this exercise all the time. And you can do it starting off of any note and for any range, you can do it. I just did it for a tritone in each direction, but you can do it an octave in each direction. So you're playing two octaves. You can really like, the world is your oyster with the spider. Maybe we should call it the oyster. Um, but basically the point is to just get your air moving between notes really smoothly, no matter how big the interval is. So you, the goal is to have the first small interval sound just as clean and just as good as that larger interval that you end with. Um, and to do that, basically you have to move your air really efficiently. So you need to use a lot of air. And when you're starting, do this slower than I did. I did it pretty fast for the purpose of the video, but go really slow and really focus in on how your air is moving in between each note. And when you're doing it, just shoot your air, just use a ton of air, play it really loud and just really like, not aggressively, but really fully. And it will really open up your sound. So the last thing I want to talk about with this piece is the last line. It has a lot of really quiet, long held notes along with some different crescendos and decrescendos. Um, so I want to give you a really simple exercise that, you know, isolates dynamic contrast that you can practice to get better at both soft playing and loud playing. I'll demonstrate for you. So I kind of cracked the note at the beginning. I'm gonna try it one more time and the goal is to keep your tone really steady and even and beautiful throughout it, no matter what dynamic you're playing at. So basically a lot of this piece can just boil down to using your air really well. Throughout all of the extras that I went through today, you just need to be making sure that your air is really solid. Make sure you have a loud picture. I say loud. You want to be able to hear the music in your head very clearly while you're playing it. All of horn playing comes down to being able to hear the music in your head so you know what note you want to play so you don't crack the notes. And then being able to use your air to execute that. My teacher always says that every issue you have on horn comes down to an issue with your air, and I just think it is like just super true. It's so many people focus on like what your mouth is doing, and that is also important, but so many problems can just be resolved with using more air in your air more efficiently. So keep that in mind. Um, I'm gonna put my email up on the screen in case you wanna reach out for lessons. In the summers, I'm based out of West Lynn, and I usually love doing lessons in the summers. But during this weird quarantine thing, if you want to do like a Zoom lesson or if you want Zoom, like lessons during the school year, I'm happy to do that. Um, or you can just reach out if you have any questions about horn or college or anything like that. So yeah, um, go practice.